at the Thomas Hart Benton House in the beautiful Roanoke neighborhood. And it is beautiful outside. We are going inside to film our Thanksgiving concert. Gobble, gobble, gobble. What are you thankful for? Um, being alive, <laughs> that no one's ill in my family. Um, to play with you. I oh, think yeah, I'm for thankful you. for that. Um, so we'll show you the outside of the house first. There it is. And normally you can take a tour here, yeah? You can normally take a tour, but they are closed for COVID. Um, but when they reopen, it's really cool. It's like, you know, I'm from Missouri, so I grew up with Thomas Hartman as my, like, you know, the artist that, you know, represents Missouri. So um, if you can come here, it's really cool. You, we're going to play in the garage at first, which is where he worked every day but he also died he went in there to sign a painting and he just dropped dead he didn't even sign the painting and his wife found him he had a heart attack so it's cool to feel like you're like in the place where he worked but also like his ghost is there and everything's set up just like it was when he um was here doing amazing murals we're gonna go in and meet steve who is the historian and director of the house he also lives here on the third floor and we got a private tour once to his third floor but you don't get that on the tour um <laughs> but uh come with us come with us so this is his path um <laughs> this is his path <laughs> <laughs> this is his tree. I, there's like a family photo of his whole family sitting on these stairs. And they were a small bunch because they were all squashed in. Yeah, how can you fit a whole family on there? And I love this porch. I'd like to welcome the wires to the Thomas Hart Benton home. My name is Steve Sitton. I'm the administrator here. Uh, for those of you that aren't real familiar with Thomas Hart Benton, he is Missouri's one of Missouri's most famous artists, most popular in the 1930s, 1940s. He did a style of art termed regionalism, which was kind of these rural uh, working class sorts of, of scenes. So this is the foyer of the house, uh, the front door with this lovely leaded glass entrance. Uh, it's a pretty substantial house, built in 1903, and Thomas Hart Benton and his wife Rita purchased it in 1939. Uh, that puts him at 50 years old. He was at the peak of his career, and they were doing well enough that they uh, wrote a check for this house. One of the neat things about this house is it's got this really wide open floor plan uh, and very distinctive, this uh, fireplace in the center of the house with the staircase and the upstairs going up and around behind, so a really uh, unusual sort of feature. So now we're in the dining room. Uh, the Bentons did a lot of entertaining. Uh, we're now talking about Thanksgiving. Uh, Tom's wife, Rita, was an excellent cook. And so they would have these dinner parties. She'd get people over here, uh, friends and neighbors and art students and businessmen, and get them all you know, a little liquored up. And then she would sell some of her husband's artwork to them. So their kitchen is actually pretty, I mean, it was modern at the time, but for being sort of well off in a giant house, it's like 78, 100 square feet, they have an actually very small kitchen. Look, we could make this, except for I don't know how to do it. And if you want, we have her spaghetti recipe. There's her spaghetti recipe. And by the way, if you want to, the night before Thanksgiving, make her spaghetti. <laughs> So Tom Benton also was an avid reader. He was a painter of history, so he really wanted to get all his historical facts right. So this is some of the, the books he has. Uh, lots of research sort of material, but also books on folklore, music, economics, religion, Reader's Digest Condensed, James Bond, and James Michener novels. Uh, he actually could read French and Italian. One time said he didn't trust translations. So he portrays himself as this, you know, Ozark country boy, it's kind of an act in a lot of respects. <laughs> so this is a nice photo of Tom Benton and his wife Rita. Um, 
taken uh, towards the end of their lives. Tom's 80 years old in this photo, so still holding up pretty good. Uh, his wife, Rita Piacenza, was very much his business manager. She ran the house, handled the money, sold the artwork, so she was very, very crucial to his success. Um, but one of the great things about this house as well, uh, this historic site, is that pretty much everything that's in here belonged to the Bennett's. It is their real stuff. So we really look forward to uh, welcoming people back to, to give you guys tours, uh, hopefully in 2021. So here we are, Thanksgiving. Um, the first piece that we're gonna play is called Sligo. And I actually uh, went to Sligo. It's a tiny town um, on the coast of Ireland and it is beautiful. Every, uh, we, w we went in the, in the winter, but every blade of grass is still green. It's all covered in ice, but it is a beautiful town. And Laurel uh, went to Sligo as well. Yes, I did. Uh, about a couple of years after you, and uh, saw some castles and some sheep. It was a great trip. Um, <laughs> castles and sheep. Mm -hmm. It's what you'd expect from Ireland. Yeah, yeah, it was good. Um, so this tune is called, once again, Sligo, and now we're going to play it for you. Thank you. 
So the next tune is called Rusku Roma. And um, we also played this in the Halloween concert. But this piece is um, inspired by, I had a, a string quartet when I lived in New York. And everybody in the string quartet was from Moldova. And I would hear these amazing Russian melodies. And I feel like this, you know, I can see, I kind of have a vision of, of, of people by the fire in fall time. And um, so this is Ruska Roma. Together. 
Um, it's called Grappelli, named after the late Stéphane Grappelli, the great uh, French gypsy jazz violinist. We just decided one day that we wanted to write some duo music because we had played so many gigs where the music sounded uh, so like thin and we wanted to get like a fuller arrangement of, of tunes and also just write, have our own project. Sasha just kind of came up with this riff. And then I showed it to Laurel and she was like, oh, let do me you work with this. It, do you oh example? yeah, so there's a little bit of hitting involved. I actually stole this from a cellist named Trevor X Service. I didn't, again, I didn't steal it, but this is the inspiration. Um, and there's a lot of hitting in it, so. So there's a lot of hammer-ons if you play guitar or pull-offs or whatever. And then I use different parts of the cello to make different percussive sounds. So yeah, she literally just emailed me a recording of that. And then I came up with the melody and sent it back to her and we're like, oh, this might actually be sort of cool. And then we decided we were gonna write a song a week. That didn't work. It <laughs> turned out to be more like a song a year. But now we're a lot better about getting together. Thank you, pandemic. <laughs> so uh, this is Grappelli. Campbell Street, which happens to be the street that Sasha lives on, and we are, are including this original on our Christmas album, which is coming out December 20th, 2020, the day after I turn 40. Woo! So, like, my second day of turning 40, I release a Christmas album with you. Yay! And we are going to do a big, fun, virtual concert at Pilgrim Chapel, and we're super excited about it. We recorded our record, um, our all of it there and it was just a magical space to be in so we're excited too um, we usually do a solstice concert there every year um, and this year it's going to be online and we hope that you guys celebrate with us
Christmas. Yeah, so we'll we'll have our Christmas album, which I think is already for sale. You can pre-order it. Pre-order. And you can also get our, our book. We're publishing a book of music. Our Christmas arrangements. Yes. <laughs> so we have like, We Wish You Merry Christmas and a celtic Green Sleeves. Green Sleeves. A Silent Night. A Chestnuts Roasting. A, chest, a Jazzy Chestnuts. Jazzy. So different styles, different tunes. We hope that you like Christmas because <laughs> that's what's coming. <laughs> All right. So Campbell Street.
So this is also a, a newer song called If They Fell. And um, I think we've only played it maybe once in public. So we'll see how it goes. <laughs> <laughs> Five years ago, 
in 2015. from a type of salmon and we imagine the cold rushing winter river water maybe not winter because like bears are sleeping but the salmon are spawning and the bears are trying to get them so this is called co Thank you. 
inside. We're inside Thomas Hart Benton's house. And um, we are in the, what I would call the living room. I would call it the living room as well. Two living rooms! <laughs> and I love this room because it features a painting um, called Evening Concert. And um, it features Leopold and David Manis. And I went to Manis College, so um, it feels special to me. Um, but the next tune is called Uncaged. I feel mildly uncaged right now. <laughs> I'm ready for some tacos. Okay. <laughs> He actually made a, an album uh, with his family, and he loved classical music. There's some classical records hanging out in this house um, that were his. And so we're going to play a couple pieces of music that were actually depicted in some of his, his works. The first thing that we're going to play is called Frankie and Johnny, and it is um, in a mural in the Missouri State Capitol. He did a bunch of different legends. He did Frankie and Johnny, which we're going to talk about, the legend there and Huck Finn and Jesse James. So if you ever are in Jefferson City and you want to check it out, go check it out. So he was such a music lover. And this is Frankie and Johnny, which Laurel's going to tell us about. So yeah, this, this song is actually based off of a murder that happened in St. Louis in 1899, where a young woman, I think she was 22 years old, she caught her lover, Johnny, cheating on her, and she shot him in the, a bar. And uh, she actually was acquitted of murder, even though he died like four days later. 
So um, this is a song, if you want to look up the words, um, it tells you more about the murder. So it's um, just a simple little song, but we're, of course, not going to sing it. We'll just play the melody to it. Did he, did she shoot him in the butt? Um, that's what Steve said. <laughs> <laughs> she shot him in the butt, everybody. <laughs> shot him in the butt. <laughs> This one is a lament over separation from true love, and it is typically thought of as an Appalachian uh, tune. <laughs> Jay Unger, and he wrote it for Ken Burns' documentary on the Civil War. So we just thought we'd include this one because it's a very American tune. Thank you. 
with our new Christmas CD. And it will be a free community concert, so it'll still be online, but um, you can tell all your friends to come and watch it too. Yeah. We want to thank the Thomas Hart Bittenhouse for having us, and um, we hope to see you at the next one. <laughs> 